This is the third and final part of my video build series, and I'm really glad you guys decided to stick around for this last part. And I'm not gonna waste any more time, so let's get right to it. I need to cut these panels to their final length and rip them to their final width next. And when I rip them to their final width, I'm gonna try to keep the glue line or the line of symmetry exactly in the center, because remember, this is from a book match. So I'm gonna to try to remove the same amount of material from each edge of the panel. Here's a tip, when you go to set the measurement of your panel for the both length and the width, make a story stick that has marks for both the length and the width of the panel. So when you go to make your final rip of your panel for the width, you could just use your story stick to set the fence. And you can also use the same story stick to set the length of the panel in your miter gauge. The panels that I made are around a half inch thick and the all of the grooves that I made in the rails and the posts are a quarter inch wide. So I, in order to get this half inch thick panel to fit in a quarter inch groove, I need to wrap it all the way around the perimeter of the panel. And to do that, I'm gonna use a stack dado set at the table saw. I'm going to give the top rail a gentle curve at the bandsaw and then I'm going to clean it up using my oscillating spindle sander. With a piece of sandpaper glued to a flexible strip of wood, I'm gonna go over this rail a little bit more after the oscillating spindle sander just to get rid of any of the bumps that were left from the spindle sander. Before I can do the final glue up, I need to round over a few pieces at the router table and do a little bit of sanding. At the router table, I'm going to put a chamfer all the way around the top of each post, and I'm going to back up the cut with a piece of scrap wood so that I can reduce chip out. I need to start working on the long rails next that join the footboard to the headboard. And for that, I'm gonna use a big slab of mahogany that was given to me by my father-in-law. Now, for the vast majority of the build up to this point, I used a mahogany that I purchased and it was, sell it was sold as South American uh, mahogany. Now, this stuff is a little bit darker in color and it's a lot heavier, so it's more dense of a mahogany. I don't know exactly where this mahogany came from, but uh, it, it just has a little bit different uh, character. So that's what I'm gonna use for the long rails. And I also use this same mahogany in the lower rail of the headboard and also the rail in the footboard. So this different mahogany will actually wrap around the lower part of the bed. And hopefully it'll uh, come out looking pretty cool.
Now I'm just going to edge joint the freshly sawn edge of both halves and I'm going to rip the opposite edge to rough width at the table saw. After getting those boards nice and flat and plain to thickness, I'm going to re-edge joint one of the edges to get it nice and square to the freshly flattened face, and then I'll rip it to its final width at the table saw. In order to join the long rails to the footboard and headboard, I'm going to use this bed rail hardware where one piece gets mortised into the rail and the other piece gets mortised into the headboard or footboard. Now, in order to make those mortises, I'm going to use my horizontal mortiser, but the only problem is the hardware is 5 eighths of an inch wide and I don't have a 5 eighths of an inch router bit in order to make the mortise. So I'm going to have to do this in two passes and I'm going to use a half inch uh, spiral bit. In order to get these brackets to go in here nicely, I'm going to need to square off these corners on each end. And I'm also going to need to hog out some material inside the mortise for these little nubs that are on the back of the bracket. Now that I have all these mortises complete in both the footboard and the headboard to inlay the bracket to receive the male portion of the bracket on the rail, I need to make one more mortise, two more mortises actually, inside of this mortise so that the hook can go on and slide down. You need to make room for this hook inside the bottom of this mortise and I'm going to do that next. With the bed assembled, the next thing I need to do is make the ledgers that's going to hold the slats which will support the mattress. And I'm going to do that next. I'm going to rip off a couple strips, one for each side.
I'm going to make a few holes along the ledger to receive some dowels and the dowels are going to be used to keep the slats positioned and keep them from moving around. These holes are going to be used to countersink the screw which will attach the ledger to the rails of the bed. I used a couple of wooden gauge blocks to set the height of the ledger and then I temporarily clamped it in place and I'm going to drill a few holes and screw it down. So that these slats can fit over top of the dowels on the ledger, I'm going to make a small slot on each side of each slat and I'm going to do that at the router table using a half inch spiral. Well, I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this build series. It definitely was a lot of fun and also challenging at the same time. And I'd also like to thank again the good folks at Lisa for sending me this queen mattress at no cost to me. It's an incredibly comfortable mattress. My wife and I have both tried it out and it sleeps incredibly well. Uh, again, I finished the bed with a few coats of a mixture of boiled linseed oil, varnish, and mineral spirits in equal parts. If you go to the description of this video, you'll see a link where you can get $75 off your purchase of a mattress at Lisa.com. And also, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, guys.